The first mission to Mir in 1996 was TM-23. Launching from the Bankanor Cosmodrome with cosmonauts Yuri Yonofranco and Yuri Yusachev. Following a two-day solo flight, Soyuz TM-23 docked with the station on February 23, 1996. The crew conducted several EVAs. On March 15, 1996, the cosmonauts installed a Strelok telescopic boom on the core module. Similar to the Canada arm on the shuttle, the first Strelok boom could only reach Mir's negative Z side so the second Strela boom was installed to allow the cosmonauts to translate easily to the reposition crystal module. The astronauts attached the boom to brackets on the Mir core module and extended its length to a full 12 meters, or 39.3 feet to us Americans. A month later, in March of 1996, continuous US presence aboard Mir started with the launch of Atlantis on mission STS-76. The US crew member to remain on board was astronaut Shannon Lucid, who transferred to the station on the 24th of March. One. Booster ignition and liftoff of Atlantis on the third shuttle Mir docking flight. Slowly and methodically, Atlantis approached Mir and lined up for docking. During Atlantis's stay at Mir, the crew conducted the first spacewalk, which occurred around the pair of dock vehicles. The spacewalks, carried out from Atlantis's crew cabin, provided valuable experience for astronauts in order to prepare for later assembly missions to the International Space Station. Lucid became the first American woman to live on the station. It was during her 188 days aboard the station which set a U.S. space flight record, that Mir was finally completed with the launch of the final module, Priroda. Rhoda's origins can be traced back to the 37KP remote sensing module originally designed for a Soviet Mir, which would have combined civilian and military surveillance of the Earth. In 1985, the module took on an international aspect when experiments scheduled for launch aboard smaller satellites as part of the Intercosmos program were moved to Priroda. Originally scheduled for a launch in 1990, it was delayed several times. With the uncertainty that came with the fall of the Soviet Union and the subsequent economic crisis in Russia in 1992, the module was put into storage. After the U.S.-Russia Space Cooperation Agreement reached in 1993, Priroda changed again. Additional weight, added by U.S. cargo, meant that the planned forward retractable solar panel was removed from the module and would be delivered later by Progress and installed by cosmonauts on an EVA. 
To power Pre Rota during its planned month-long period of free flight before docking with Mir, 160 expendable batteries were installed. Eventually the rendezvous period too was changed, and shortened significantly. Pirota was taken out of storage in early 1994, delivered to the final test hall Korolov in November 1995, and arrived at Bankanor in January 1996. On April 23, 1996, a Broton rocket lifted off from pad 8123 in Bankanor, with Pirota on top. After reaching orbit, an electrical connector failure caused the amount of power available in the lone module to be cut in half. Due to the electrical problem, Pirota would only have one attempt at docking before all power would be lost. This caused some concern for ground controllers because most of the other modules failed during their first docking attempt. However, Pirota docked with no problems and achieved a hard dock on April 26, 1996. After being moved to its permanent location at the Plus Z docking port on the base block the next day, Pirota was connected to the rest of the station's electrical system, which allowed it to run off the power from the solar panels on other modules. The crew on board then removed the batteries from Pirota and stored them in progress M31 for a destructive re-entry. A part of the cargo of Pirota consisted of biological experiments for the production of clean medical preparations and 900 kilograms of equipment and experiments for the American astronaut Shannon Lucid. These included equipment for scientific research of Earth, including cameras for remote sensing of the surface and the atmosphere. Stays at Mir were getting longer, and the crews were learning a lot about long-term habitation of space, which would pave the way for the long endurance flights aboard the new International Space Station. Soyuz TM-24 was launched aboard the carrier Soyuz-U rocket from Bankanor on August 17, 1996. Soyuz TM-24 reached the planned orbit without problems, and all systems worked perfectly. It docked with Mir on August 19th, and the system worked so well that no manual control was needed. Approach and docking took place automatically using the Kurs docking system. The crew consisted of cosmonauts Valery Corzin and Alexandra Caleri, and the first French woman in space, Claudie André Deschet. André Deschet carried out biological and medical experiments on Mir for 16 days as part of the Cassiope mission, before returning to Earth with Onofrienko and Yusachev. The crew stayed busy performing various scientific experiments, namely in biology, medicine, Earth observation, and space technology. But that didn't mean they didn't have technical issues. In September 1996, the crew had to spend a lot of time and effort to repair an air seal problem in one of the modules. Obviously, the problem was eventually solved, but the cause remained a mystery. Lucid's stay aboard Mir ended with the flight of Atlantis on STS-79, which launched on September 16, 1996. Roll, 
STS-79 was the first space shuttle mission to carry a double space hab module, giving it even more space and carrying extra cargo. Contact and capture. Lattice and mirror shaking hands. Copy, capture, confirm. The crew transferred more than 4,000 pounds of supplies to Mir, including water generated by Atlantis' fuel cells, and experiments that included investigations into superconductors, cartilage development, and other biological studies. The transfer also went the other way around, and the crew loaded Atlantis with about 2,000 pounds of experiment samples and equipment, making the total transfer the most extensive yet. Shannon Lucid was replaced by John Balaha, who came up on Atlantis. While on board, Balaha saw the station operations improve in several ways, including transfer procedures for a dock space shuttle and handover procedures for long-duration American crew members. Famously, Blaha also used ham radio to communicate with amateur and enthusiasts on the ground on Earth. Two spacewalks were carried out during his time aboard, and their aim was to remove electrical power connectors from a 12-year-old solar array on the base block and reconnect the cables to the more efficient solar arrays recently installed. In all, Blaha spent four months with the Mir-22 cosmonaut crew conducting material science, fluid science, and life science research, before returning to Earth the next year aboard Atlantis on STS-81. With the arrival of the Priroda, Mir was now complete. Its multi-port node was now full, and the astronauts and cosmonauts settled into the station and used it for further scientific experiments and studies. Mir served as the proving ground for so much in space exploration, including how to handle emergencies and when to call it quits. <laughs> <laughs>